For me, football is very important. You know, it gave me the opportunity to, you know, go places that I thought I would never be able to go and see some things that I never thought I would dream about seeing. And, and it also just changed my life, like financially, you know, it just helped change my family, you know, so I'm forever thankful. My earliest memory of playing football, um, Growing up, we, we grew up in this small country town, Clarksville, Texas, and I want to say I was in the third grade, and me and my brother was on the same team, and I was a tight end, and uh, my brother, he was a, I want to say he, he was a running back, and uh, we were in the middle of the game, and I think we may have been losing pretty bad, and the other kids were, we were little kids, so the other kids were just scared to play quarterback, and scared to run the ball, and they was like, who wants to play quarterback? I was like, I'll do it. And they just put me at quarterback and put my brother at running back, and for the rest of the season, that's how we win, and we went on to win games, and you know, that's pretty much my earliest memory of football, though. It might sound a little weird, but as a kid, I always felt like I was a different kid than everyone else. Like, I'm, I'm just different. Like, it's hard to explain, but my senior year in high school, I just, I felt like I was like the guy, like I'm the guy. And like I put in the work, I knew what I was doing. I felt like I was one of the best backs in Texas, even though I didn't have the, you know, the big Texas schools to offer me at the time to back it up, but I just felt like I was the guy. I was on varsity as a freshman, I didn't start, we had uh, LaMichael James, which was, yeah, but he was, he played quarterback, but at running back, they would put a fullback in just to block for him, because we wasn't, we wasn't throwing it that much, so. He was probably the best football player I've ever seen in my own eyes. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm most proud of my basketball accolades than football, because my dad's side of the family, they all went to Liberty Alo High School. And honestly, I went over there to like follow in their footsteps in basketball. So when I got there, like my freshman year, I was on varsity football and basketball, but the football stuff I was just playing because just to be playing, like having fun, just to be playing. But the basketball stuff I took serious, like I was so serious about it. Like, I came over here to break scoring records and and I I, I end up doing that. So that, those are some of the most, like, things that I'm proud of the most, honestly. Back back then, you know, social media wasn't as big. It was around, but it wasn't, it wasn't as big as it is, but, so your junior year, it's a date where they can first start calling you. Like, six o'clock in the morning, my phone will start ringing. Like, man, who was this? Like, but it's like the University of Memphis, I want to say, I think it was. Like, we just want to be the first school to call you and be on your mind. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like, if this is how it's going to be, I was a junior. I think I was 16, 17 years old. But it was fun, though, you know, getting all those big offers and everybody know who you are. And it was pretty fun. I mean, that was a great experience, a great learning experience, getting the play behind the Michael James and Kenyon Barner and sharing time with DeAnthony Thomas. The Michael James being a neighborhood hero, he was actually probably the main reason I went up there because I wanted to follow in his footsteps so bad because I just looked up to him. Like he lived three houses down from me and I just wanted to be like him so much. I never told nobody that they was like, why are you going way up there? I'm like, well, I like the school. And of course I was a smart kid, so I could come up with some stuff to make people to believe it. Like, well, they don't have any bigger bags. I'll be the biggest back there, so I'll play early. And, but in all honesty, I was just following in his footsteps and, you know, wanted to do the things that he did up there. So 
But that was a great experience. Man, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Early, um, man, it was kind of shaky for me because I get to end them. I have to sit out a year because of the transfer rules. And then the next year, going into the first game, I remember the coach, uh, the running back coach, coming up to all the running backs and telling us how the rotation was going to go. So he didn't tell me anything. So I'm like, man. So I'm, I'm, am I not? He telling us the rotation on game days. I'm like, am I not gonna play? So I was, I wasn't in the game plan. I wasn't gonna play. I was on all the special teams. So, so we get in the game and the back. We had two backs who was gonna rotate in the game, and one of them rolled his ankle on the first kickoff. He was a starting kick returner. He rolled his ankle, so that forced their hand to play me. So I think I, ended, I scored two touchdowns that game. Um, the second game, I scored two more touchdowns. So then at, at that point, it's like forcing their hand, like, all right, we can't just take him out the rotation. He scores four touchdowns in two games. We can't take him out the rotation. He has to play. So that's kind of how that went. It was like a, I was like, man, this could have went south fast because I wasn't even in the game plan at all. So that was a blessing. I'll never forget my first touchdown in the new cow field. After they did all the renovations and stuff, I'll never forget that. Um, I will never forget like some of the times in the summertime where all the guys would get together and we'll go to the local um, rec center on campus and play basketball. I will never forget some of those games. And I, I was a little discouraged because I, I didn't get drafted like you said. So at this point, I'm like, man, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like I'm, I'm sitting there watching the draft, and I leave because it's getting later. Like my phone's not ringing anymore. It's getting later. I leave. I go. I drive over there to Liberty Island High School, and I just sit in the parking lot, and I just look at the field. Just look, look, and I'm discouraged at this point because I don't know what's gonna happen. Like I'm, I didn't get drafted. Draft's over. So the Bengals call and they're like, you know, we want we want to bring you in as a undrafted free agent, not a tryout guy. So it's like we want to, you know, sign you to our 90-man roster or whatever. So I'm like, all right, you know, I talked to my agent about it. You know, we have some more offers and stuff, but we end up going with the Bengals. So I get there and uh, and it's a talented room. Man, it's gonna be an uphill battle trying to make this team because we got Jeremy Hill, who came out of LSU, and Giovanni Bernard from North Carolina, Rex Burkhead from Nebraska, and Cedric Pierman, who was a veteran guy, mostly special teams, but he had been in the league like six or seven years at the time, and Pro Bowl special team guy, so it was kind of like his spot was secure too. So it was like you got those four guys. And they bring in three rookies. So it's like, man, how am I gonna make this team? You got these four guys solidified and there's no more open spots, basically. So it's like, I'm just gonna go out here and do the best I can and you know, leave it all on the table. And that's what I did. And I didn't, I didn't end up making the initial 53. I signed to the practice squad my rookie year. And I ended up being called up later, but it was some talented guys in, the, in that room, you know, for people who watch football, they know who Rex Burkhead is now. He, he's doing great things for the Patriots, and he wasn't really playing much over there. Like, that's just how talented the guys were. So, um, I called my mother because uh, we were going to play the Baltimore Ravens, and my brother, was, my brother was on the Baltimore Ravens at the time. So my first NFL game, I ended up getting to do a jersey swap with my brother. So that was a special moment for me because, you know, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Obviously, I've been on the practice squad all year. I don't think I'm gonna play at all. So I called my mother and she was like, you know, she was just real excited and she started calling people, the family, and they ended up coming up to the game. So that was a, uh, a big moment. It's very, it's a stressful thing, but at the same time, it's just like, you gotta worry about what you can control, you know. So if you you'll drive yourself crazy thinking about this may be my last 
but you don't, you're not even controlling that. So it's like, you might as well not even worry about it and go out and have fun and do what you do, because if you don't, you'll drive yourself crazy. To chase your dream, you know, and, and, and you, can, you can be whatever you want to be, seriously. Like, I know that sounds kind of cliche and everyone says that, but that's the truth. And I, I want to come around and, and like, be touchable to the kids if that makes sense. Like, because when I was coming up, the guys who were in the NFL or went to the NFL or whatever, it was, it was like, it seemed so far-fetched because I never seen them around. So it was like, not to say they weren't around, but I never seen them. Like, you you may see me at a local grocery store. <laughs> you know, I'm, it's just, it's real. Like, I'm, I'm here. So it's like, that's one of the main reasons why I want to be around for the kids. Like, so they can actually see, like, man, it's, this is real, like he's from here and he's doing this, I can do that too, so. Cause I came from this community, you know what I mean? Like I could be, like you said, I could be anywhere and go to a local high school game, but I'm not from there, so it's like, I don't know, it's, it's just, I came from this community, so I wanna motiv motivate the kids in this community, so. I let the other NFL guys take care of their own communities, you know what I mean, so. So, uh, some of the stadiums that you'll play in will give you that college atmosphere. Like, last year when I was with Green Bay, we went and played in Seattle on a Thursday night. That gives you a college experience because the fans are wild and, you know, they're up on their feet and yelling. and So that gives you the college experience, but some of them just don't compare. You know, because I played in Kyle Field, over 100,000, every time we stepped out there, so some of us just can't compare. You know, I go to LSU and play in Death Valley at night, and they got Shaq on the sideline, and you know, some of that stuff just, I wasn't the most athletic guy, you know, ever, really. I was never the most athletic guy. Even when I got to college, you would notice that everyone is athletic, and you probably won't be the most athletic guy. So you have to be mentally, you know, mentally you have to be, you know, on top of your game, like as far as academics and knowing what to do on and off the field and making the right decisions and you just have to be mentally into it.